Okay, so today we're looking at different film types and different film formats. Um, if you're new to film, this is going to be a great introduction for you. It will show you what's out there and what to look for when you're buying film. Um, the three major types of film are going to be slide film, color negative film, and black and white film. Those are the three different uh, you know, films you're going to find and they're the three different results you're going to get at the end of the day. Um, the three different formats, um, there's a few more out there, but these are the three most common, are going to be 35 millimeter, medium format film, either 120 or 220, and also uh, large format film, which for most of us is going to be 4x5. There's also 8x10 and ultra large formats out there, but uh, the most common is uh, 4x5. So we recently purchased all this film here through an eBay auction. It's a couple years expired, but that should be fine as long as it was refrigerated, which the seller says it was. And uh, it's uh, got all different formats, which is great, so I can show those to you. And it's got two different types. It's got black and white film here, and it's also got slide film here. I do have color negative, so I'll be showing that as well. So let's have a look here. Um, if you're starting out, usually you're gonna be working with 35 millimeter film, and it's gonna come in a package like this. This is Ilford black and white Pan F50. Um, great film, low speed, uh, relatively grainless, so really cool film. Uh, 35 millimeter, yeah, is going to come in a box like so. Uh, you can also find it in five packs. Like this, let's see here, this is a Velvia 50, which is great. It's a slide film. Uh, this is a pack of five, so there's five rolls in there. And uh, what it's going to look like when you take it out of the box, it usually comes in a canister like so. And the film itself, let's see here, looks like this. It's in a um, it's in a cartridge, and you've probably seen this before. And you do, you just pull out the leader here and load it into your camera. So 35 millimeter film, I'll show an example here, it is going to be loaded into a camera back. This is my Zorky rangefinder, but uh, you know, most SLRs are going to be 35 millimeter, and you can see the shutter there. So you you put the film in and draw it across the shutter into the take up side. So that's 35 millimeter, um, medium format. We've also got some Pan F50, this black and white film, in medium format. Let's see here, comes in a longer box like so. And when you take it out of the box, it's going to look something like this. It's usually wrapped this little protective plastic. This is Ektar, this is color negative actually. Really nice film. And a camera that you'll load it into will look something like this. All right, this is the Pentax 6.7, way bigger. And with the medium format film, you put it in one side and you draw it across the curtain and and connect it to the spool on the other side where it will be rewrapped on this side. So that's medium format. And then four by five, let's look here. Uh, this is black and white Fujifilm. It's Acros or Acros, I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, 100 speed, really good stuff. It pushes really well if you want to develop it at a different uh, ISO. And I can't open the box because it's just film in there. You have to do it in a completely dark environment. But you're going to load it into a film magazine, like this one. The film goes inside, and then you cover it with the pr protective uh, dark slide. And there's actually, you get two per magazine, one on one side and one on the other. And that goes into a large format camera. If you check out my other videos, you'll, you'll probably see an example of that. With medium format films, you'll also find uh, five packs of film. This is T-Max, Kodak black and white film. Uh, really nice stuff and uh, you know, a, sing a single box will look like, look like so. And then a five pack like this. And you can see you've got five rolls of film in there.
So those were the three different formats. That was uh, 35 millimeter, you got 120, and then you've got uh, large format 4x5 here. So let's talk about uh, the three different types of film. Uh, black and white. Black and white of any size, you know, it's going to make a black and white negative. Um, you know what, let's move over and give you some examples. So what we've got here is a light table. Let me get this adjusted. Okay, so what we've got here is a light table. It's for viewing negatives. Let's turn that on. And so let's look at 35 millimeter. So what we can do here is look at these guys here. So these are black and white negatives. And uh, this is your results from 35 millimeter. I mean, obviously the colors are flipped. And from there, you're either going to scan it, and which will invert the colors, or you're going to take it into the darkroom and print with it. So 35 millimeter comes with one long sprocketed strip of film, and then you slice it into usually six or fives in a row. And I put mine in sheets, these protective sheets, which are really great. And, uh, and yeah, stow them in a binder. So this is what you're gonna. This is the result of uh, shooting black and white film. Comes out as a negative, and this is 35 millimeter. This here is a color negative 35 millimeter film. So color negative, it has this strange orange tint, but uh, don't worry about it. Uh, scanners know how to correct for that. It's just the byproduct of shooting color negative film. Totally normal. And uh, again, yeah, you can. Uh, way trickier to print with this in a darkroom, but uh, easy to scan and get some really beautiful image. Both uh, color negative and black and white negative have really big latitude, so when you scan it, you'll be able to, you'll be able to tweak it a lot. Um, there's a lot of range, a lot of range between the darkest darks and the lightest lights, and you'll be able to make uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of changes in post if you need to, or a lot of adjustments to get it just right. So, that's, uh, yeah, this is approximately one roll of 35 millimeter. You get about 36 shots on a roll, and you can see here, there's uh, six strips of six. There we go. And then this is really cool if you've never seen it before. This is slide film. Um, and what you get here is actual positives. Hmm. So, yeah. Um, the actual images, uh, what you see is what you get. So if it's exposed properly, you get some pretty amazing pictures. Let me just make an adjustment here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky. Yeah, so this is 35 millimeter, again, about 36 shots. And uh, the images, what you see is what you get. Pretty cool. So here, check this out. I've also got a loop, which is like a, a magnifying glass. So. Uh, if you've never done this before, it's it's amazing. The video won't do it justice, but to actually inspect your pictures with a loop is really cool. Let me give it a try here. All right, so with slide films, um, you can scan them, which is really common workflow nowadays, or you can also project them uh, with a proper projector. So kind of interesting to, uh, to be able to uh, project them and blow them up large onto a wall or a white surface or a proper screen and see them. Uh, they have an amazing color fidelity that uh, to see in person rather than just uh, a digital scan. But uh, yeah, if you get a, sh a chance, uh, shoot some slide film. It's really amazing to see on a, a light table like such in person.
Um, the only problem with slide film is it has a lot less latitude, so it's really easy to get a shot that's either too bright or too dark. You really got to nail the exposures. So, uh, so yeah, it's a real challenge, but if you get it right, it's, it's pretty amazing to see. All right, so let's take a look at medium format. Um, again, we'll start with black and white. So you can see here the negative's much larger. Um, so you're going to get a higher quality image. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. In medium format, depending on your camera, you might have a rectangular frame or you might have a square frame depending on how the camera uh, shoots. This is with the 6.7, so the Pentax 6.7, so you can see it's approximately six centimeters by six centimeters, or six centimeters by seven centimeters, excuse me. And something like a Hasselblad would shoot six by six, so you'd have a square image. So black and white negatives. And you've got color negatives. Uh, this is upside down. Not that it matters, they're all inverted. Um, so color negatives here. Uh, these are shot with the Hasselblad, you can see they're square images. And in this case, you know, it's the same length of film, but because you're shooting square, which is smaller, you're getting 12 shots in a roll, as opposed to the 6.7, which only gives you 10. And there's other cameras out there that shoot like 6x9, which gives you even less on a roll. I think like, I don't know, maybe 8 or 6, I'm not sure. Um, and then there's 645 cameras, which will give you 16 on a roll. And we've got medium format slides here. Uh, again, with the 6.7, pretty cool. Let me see if I can have a look at these ones. So just a ton of detail in there. Okay, so that's medium format. And then up to large format here, uh, you'll see that these images, the negatives here, are huge. So on the left, you've got some uh, black and white negatives. And on the right, you've got some color negatives. Um, yeah, you shoot these individually, so it's just one-offs. So there's no roll um, of them all attached together. It's just individual sheets that you, uh, that you shoot. So yeah, color negative, black and white. Thoroughness, we've also got some slides here. And the video probably doesn't do it justice, but pretty incredible. And when you get the loop in there and look at all the detail it has to offer, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. So I'll just take a moment here to uh, look at the different film types and uh, maybe talk a little bit about them. Uh, we've got, let's see here, this is E100VS. Uh, it's a discontinued Kodak slide film. In fact, all of Kodak's slide films have been discontinued. But if you can find this stuff, really cool, really punchy, kind of warm colors. Uh, the VS is for vivid saturation, uh, though there is a G and a GX, which are uh, different levels of saturation. Um, Fujiakros, really cool black and white film. Um, really nice, really smooth. Same with the Kodak T-Max, uh, if you can find that stuff, really good. Uh, Kodak and Fuji still make both these black and white films, so really easy to find. Uh, Provia is a great slide film, and it's uh, really good for skin tones. It's uh, not super saturated like Velvia. It's still really punchy, but much more uh, much more natural. It's, uh, yeah, it would be your choice for portraits. If you've got people in your uh, photograph, it's probably a better choice than than a slide film like Velvia or E100 VS. Uh, Velvia 50, a classic. Um, it's got a really big following. It's just punchy colors, great for uh, great for landscape photography. It makes the greens and the blues really come out nicely. Uh, Astia, it's been discontinued and I've never actually shot it before, so I'm pretty stoked to uh, to shoot this stuff. Uh, let's find out. Got three rolls in there. Yeah, it's been discontinued and it's pretty rare to find. Uh, I've seen com comparisons with Astia and 
Propia and Astia seems to be a bit more uh, natural. It's uh, really good for long exposures. I think it has a better reciprocity. And also, what else about it? Uh, the color palette is uh, is uh, really, really nice and natural. Uh, this one's kind of weird. Ectochrome. I haven't made this for quite a while, or at least the 64T. This is tungsten balanced, so it's meant for indoor lighting rather than uh, daylight balance, like almost every other film. Um, generally how this works is if you have a daylight balanced film, everything looks great and natural in daylight. But if you shoot it inside under um, like tungsten lights or just your general inside, indoor lights, it's going to take on a really really orange sort of, uh, sort of look or a really amber sort of look. So this is balanced such that everything will come out nice and natural looking when you shoot it indoors. Uh, Pan F50, already explained, this is a nice black and white film, low speed. So if you're shooting outdoors, really nice stuff. You can open your aperture all the way and get some nice kind of very, very low grain shots. Uh, Trax here, this is a really popular film. 400 speed, used to be used by photojournalists back in the day. Um, it's a bit grainy, but it's got a nice kind of... Uh, it's got a nice grain structure to it. You know, grainy isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it gives kind of a classic look. And, uh, you know, when you're shooting film, it's uh, kind of nice to have that sort of old school look sometimes. And still got Velvia 50 here. Um, uh, let's see. So I'll just make sure this is clear. Uh, the black and white films here. And there's plenty more brands out there. I mean, whoops. This here are black and white films that I got. Um, there's other ones out there too that are really nice, made by uh, Rolly. Um, let's adjust that. Uh, also, uh, yeah, so Kodak, Ilford make black and white. Really nice films out there made by Rolly. Even if you can find uh, old F key films are great. They've since been discontinued, but they're still out there. Really low speed, like 25 ISO. I've also got 50 ISO. Let's see here. So those are some of the black and whites. And these are the slide films here. We got Velvia, Provia, Astia, E100 VS. So those will give you the slides as results. And here we've got some examples of uh, color negative film. One of my favorite color negative films is Ektar 100, uh, still made by Kodak, a uh, really nice film. Um, good color saturation, but still really natural. As a color negative film, it has tons of latitude. Uh, made in, all these films are made in all three formats, so should be able to find it in 35 mil or 120. So that's Ektar, oh, there it is, Ektar in 120. And then another nice color negative film is Portra. If you're looking for nice smooth skin tones, uh, that's a really nice one to go with. And relatively low grain, it's great for just scanning. It's good for a digital workflow. But uh, you know, the funnest thing about film is me mixing it up and, and trying out other films and you know, seeing the results you get. So um, um, one more thing you might find if you're starting out with film is uh, you know, it gets a bit expensive. If you can find it, you can also get film in 100 foot reels. And what this is meant for, it's meant for bulk loading. So you can actually roll your own films. Let's see here. Um, yeah, you just need a bulk loader. And uh, this one was actually given to me by uh, 
one of our subscribers. Uh, thanks, Cage21. And I'll make a, a video shortly showing you how to bulk load if you're interested. Um, yeah, it's definitely more affordable than just buying roll after roll of black and white film. Um, yeah. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you got any questions, give me a shout. And uh, feel free to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.